back to Bumblebee, everyone. I hope you're ready to be filled with existential dread that'll keep you up at night. Because today's video is the top 10 scary space mysteries NASA still can't solve. For number 10, we get to wonder why the sun's crispy outer layer is hotter than it is. Corona versus surface. In the hierarchy of corona, we know the virus is at the bottom. That crap was like a zero out of ten. And then we got Corona beer up at the top, like an angelic crowning jewel. But who is rocking that middle ground? But Corona out there can fulfill the sparkly essence of the beer and the sheer decimation of a disease, but still have its own special spot. Why the uppermost portion of the sun's atmosphere, of course? It extends thousands of kilometers above the visible surface of the sun, invisible to the human eye, thanks to the fact that the bright sun blocks the corona. The corona wanting its spotlight will gradually transform into a solar wind, which is like an extension of said sun's atmosphere, and it happens to flow outward through our solar system. But the mystery here is the heat. The corona is about 1 million Celsius in comparison to the surface of the sun being about 5500 Celsius. They're right beside one another, practically spooning to be honest, yet one remains more boiling than the other. Some theories are that the millions of nano flares on the solar surface are creating enough energy that it heats up the corona. Another is maybe solar tornadoes, which are a real thing. Astronomers study the corona to better understand how solar storms impact the Earth. Space missions such as NASA's Parker Solar Probe help us learn more about the sun and the hidden corona. If you want to learn more about space or discoveries in general, now would be a good time to subscribe to The Hive. Number 9 will make you terrified of death your every breathing moment. It's the unknown killer asteroids. We only know a fraction of the giant space junk we got floating around in our atmosphere. Luckily, we're discovering more of our solar system space rocks every day, thanks to the ever improving wide field telescope surveys that there are. In fact, scientists now think that 90% of the planet killer near Earth objects, aka those that are larger than one kilometer in diameter, and around 50% of the city killers have been found. However, the European Space Agency's Gaia Space Telescope revealed earlier this year that there are about 10 times more asteroids in the solar system than astronomers thought. Approximately 150 thousand objects in the solar system, and most of them are asteroids, making it a very real possibility that an unknown asteroid out there could destroy life on Earth, just like the dinosaur killer 66 million years ago. This next title is self-explanatory. Number eight is The Wow. And no, not the sham wow. However, that commercial does live rent-free in my brain. I am talking about the transmission received to the Big Ear Radio Telescope, Ohio State University, 1977. The Big Ear, built in 1963, was used to listen to wideband radio emissions from the stars. I don't know what those are, I don't think anyone else did either or cared, because in 1973 it's converted to a more important mission, aliens. The Big Ear searched the skies for narrowband signals that could have been indications of intelligent life. Don't get me wrong, it's the 70s, this thing is a microwave in comparison to what we have today, but it could still record frequency, signal strength, and bandwidth. In 77, astronomer Jerry Emmon had just sat down for a fun shift of looking through computer printouts when he notices the signal. 6EQUJ5. While a literal key smash might seem innocuous along with other data, it represented a continuous narrow band of signal around 1420 megahertz from a fixed point in space, the constellation Sagittarius, which gradually grows in strength and then fades as the radio telescope orientation passes across its source. When Emin saw this sequence on paper, he was so surprised he circled it and immediately wrote wow in the margins, hence the name. The signal has never been received again. Number seven requires you to take a hike, it's the high mountains. The question, what is the origin of a chain of high mountains that closely follows the equator of Saturn's moon Lapidus? The answer, who knows, but I'm just going to throw a bunch of science jargon at you and maybe one of us will understand it. A line of white dots making up a ridge along Lapidus, informally called the Voyager Mountains, was first spotted and studied in the early 1980s. Years later, NASA's Cassini probe studied the ridge more in depth. The white dots spotted by the first excursion were not, in fact, peaks, but regions of ice on the eastern side. The other mountains are covered with an unknown dark material. The angular structure of the moon has led to a conspiracy theory that it is not a natural satellite, but could have been built or modified by another civilization. However, its lumpy shape could have easily had a natural explanation. Early in its life when the moon still spun rapidly, a thick crust could have frozen the moon into an odd shape. Over time, the satellite spin would have slowed until eventually coming tidally locked. This is also likely how the ridges of the mountains around Lapidus Equator were formed, or perhaps the material deposited by a ring or moon that collapsed into the satellite. Scientists are hoping to learn more about this feature to better explain similar events on Earth and Mars. This next name is surprisingly saucy for 
a space thing. Number six, the great attractor. We all have that friend you can give this nickname to. Now what they're great at attracting, well that's up to them. Trouble, rich men, crappy friends. In the case of the great attractor, think of the paranormal activity scene in the first movie. When the female character gets grabbed by the ankle and pulled from her bed upstairs and up into the attic. Well. On a galactic scale, we are the woman and the great attractor is the poltergeist. That's because at a speed of 2.2 million kilometers per hour, which not to alarm you further, it's actually super slow in space time, the Milky Way, its companion galaxies, and the various galactic hang honors are all moving towards an area of space we don't know much about. The speed at which we are moving implies an area of space creating a massive gravitational force, roughly equivalent to 10,000 galaxies. And since it's sucking everything within a considerable distance, this mysterious region Region has been dubbed the Great Attractor. This will very likely be the thing that ends our universe. For number five is the flying black hole. Already bad enough, so why not throw it across the time space continuum at full speed? Not sure how it happened, but that's the story of a big ass black hole in 2012. NASA discovered what, in all likelihood, was a humongous black hole literally being kicked out of its galaxy. It was observed hurtling away at several million miles per hour, as astronomer Francesca Sivano, who led the study, he discovered the black hole explained. This black hole is millions times more massive than the sun, and the galaxy just sent it packing like nothing. That's like lifting up an elephant with your pinky and flinging it to the next country. There are a few theories as to how this happened, though none are proven, thus why it's on the list. Sivano and her team theorized that two galaxies with black holes each merged. That the resulting gravitational waves gave a now single hole a humongous kickstart, causing it to escape. Another option is that three supermassive black holes clashed at dogpile style the third and lightest one got booted off. Nothing has been confirmed, however. Number four is a classic. It's the question of dark matter. In 1998, the Hubble telescope discovered that the universe was expanding much faster than it was before. Since then, NASA and friends have been trying to figure out why, but they still really don't know. Okay, end of segment. Psych, they still got theories, even if they have literally nothing else. One theory is what NASA dubbed some strange kind of energy fluid that filled space. And then they call it dark matter, or dark energy. Really, all we know for sure is that there's a lot more of it than light energy. NASA estimates that the universe is about 68% dark energy. Dark energy's cousin, the almost as mysterious dark matter, makes up an additional 27% of the universe. The remaining 5% is light energy, or stuff we can actually see. Yes, 95% of the universe is invisible. Sleep tight tonight, guys. Number three is pretty much the same thing as the last, and it was mentioned. It's dark flow. The observable universe is about 90 billion light years across. But experts feel the entire cosmos is at least 250 times larger. In 2018, a NASA team discovered a weird, unexpected movement in a far off galaxy cluster that were pushing these galaxies in a single direction away from our line of vision. Call it cosmic dust in the wind. The team's lead scientist, Alexander Kashlinki, isn't sure what's causing these oddball movements, only that it doesn't seem to be anything observable. So he's theorized that the forces beyond what we can see are controlling these clusters and dubbed whatever it is. Dark flow. Then in 2013, data from the Planck spaceship mission seemingly disproved the flow, but even some of their own scientists insisted that the data felt flawed. So in 2015, Cash Linky and his team returned with a vengeance. They claimed the follow up studies proved consistent with their original findings, and the same dark flow dipple marker appeared in all their tests. This tells them dark flow is real, but also that we don't know for certain if it's real. None of this makes sense, and I particularly don't try to care. So let's move on to something. Less scary. Psych! Alright, now it's number two, the super void. Space is pretty effing huge and there's a lot of crap going on inside of it, including space, because space has spaces where space doesn't exist. Having fun yet? Anyways, so one of these big space not space gaps is the Iridunus super void. It turned up during a survey of the cosmic microwave background, which is the electromagnetic remnants of the earliest moments of the universe still whizzing around in space. Scientists found a cold spot in the results around the Iridunus constellation and observed it further. And what do you know, it's a super void, an unexpectedly large and very empty bit of space around 1 billion light years in diameter. Even by astronomer standards, that's a pretty large piece
piece of real estate, or real vacuum if you prefer. Other voids have been found before, though this super void is so large it can't be explained by current theories of the universe, which is pretty worrying. Nevertheless, scientists love the opportunity to propose a new theory, and some of them are quite creative. The most straightforward idea proposes the existence of a super, super, super massive black hole with the mass of a thousand galaxies. A more horrific potential option is instead of a black hole, some researchers have proposed the void is actually evidence of parallel universe. So more work is required to give greater credence to that theory. And last but never the least, since it's number one, it's the zombie stars. Now this is actually cool. Name something more effing metal than a space rock munching down on another space rock. And somehow they're real, but also not like everything else on this list. So in August 2014, NASA announced it had discovered a star system that fallen victim to a weak supernova boom. So they very creatively put their heads together as a group to name it SN 2012Z because scientists are not typically novelists. Usually when stars supernova, it's game over, but in this case, a part of the system's dwarf star may have survived in a weird zombie way. If this is true, this would likely be because the supernova was not weak enough to damage a star beyond repair, but not outright destroy it. No such zombie has officially been confirmed yet, but it's currently the best explanation for how some stars can get blown to bits and then still hang on. Oh, and here's the reason those ones are called zombie stars, by the way. They apparently scream as they eat other stars. As NASA explained, several seemingly dead stars are emitting high energy x-rays that could very well be their howls or screams. If that's not freaky enough, they scream while siphoning energy off of other nearby stars, essentially feasting on them. But NASA doesn't know yet how they emit these x-rays considering they're supposedly dead. Perhaps they don't want to know because an undead star basically eating the brains of a living one isn't a reality many of us are strong enough to face. Thank you so much for tuning in once again, I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more from us and comment down below what space mystery scares you the most.